How can you get abs in 60 days? Take a look at your midsection right now. At 50% body fat, your abs are completely hidden. With a reduction to 40%, your waistline becomes smaller but your abs are still not visible. At 30%, your stomach appears much flatter, yet your abs remain undefined. When you reach 20% body fat, your abs start to become visible. With proper training, achieving 10% body fat results in a well-defined six-pack. At 6%, you would be shredded enough for a professional bodybuilding competition as evidenced by a natural bodybuilder who reached 6.2 body fat measured by DEXA. Most men aim for the six-pack sweet spot between 10 to 20% body fat to have visible abs without the extreme side effects of severe dieting. For women, this range is around 18 to 28% body fat. However, you can enhance your abs appearance regardless of genetics by following three science-based strategies. Optimal ab exercises, adjusting your diet to calculate and achieve your fat loss goals, and using effective supplements. By adhering to these guidelines, you can achieve well-defined abs in 60 days. Let's talk about training. It's a common belief these days that ab training is a waste of time because, as the argument goes, if you're not lean enough, you won't see any definition anyway. However, I disagree. Imagine applying this logic to any other muscle, it would be like saying don't train your shoulders because unless you're lean enough, you won't see the definition. But no one ever says that. The point is, you need to train your abs so that when you do cut down, there's enough muscle there for them to show. Proper hypertrophy training for your abs will make them pop just like any other muscle. The problem with most ab training online is that many fitness influencers showcase fast-paced, so-called fat-burning circuit-style workouts which are mostly a waste of time. These workouts don't get the abdominal muscles close enough to failure to stimulate meaningfully hypertrophy, they essentially just another form of cardio. Sure, you'll burn a few extra calories but you're not building your six-pack. To really get your abs to pop up, you should focus on progressive overload training just like you would for any other muscle. This means loading the ab muscles with weight. To build your best six-pack, you really only need two exercises, one weight loaded crunch and one leg raise. For the loaded crunch, you can do a cable crunch where you grab a rope, kneel down and crunch while allowing your lower back to round as you squeeze your abs. Don't yank the weight with your hands. Keep tension on your six-pack. If you don't have a cable, you can do plate-weighted crunches by holding a plate against your chest and crunching down hard on your abs. Do these for 3 sets of 10 to 12 reps twice a week, taking your last set all the way to failure. This means you can't complete a full rep despite maximum effort. Every time you train, Try to add some weight or rep while keeping your form nice and controlled. These exercises will hit the full six-pack but will slightly emphasize the upper four-pack. For some lower ab focus, you should add a leg raise. You can do this hanging from a pull-up bar or use a romaine chair. I prefer a romaine chair variation because it keeps my lower back locked in, allowing me to focus on my abs better. If you can't do a straight leg leg raise yet, you can do bent knee raises instead. Do this for 3 to sets of 10 to 20 reps twice a week, also taking your last set to failure. To progress, I prefer to add reps. You start with 3 sets of 10 and add 1 rep each week until you reach 3 sets of 20. At that point, you can add some ankle weights or slow down the negative portion of the movement. Once you reach this level, you should have some pretty solid ab development. While planks are great for general core strength and stability, they're not the most efficient option for building a six-pack, so I consider them optional. Anti-rotation movements can be great for targeting the transverse abdominis and obliques, but they won't hit the six-pack muscle as directly or with as much tension as weighted crunches and leg raises. So, here's your full six-pack training plan. Hit your abs twice per week and you can shuffle the days around to fit your schedule. Including cardio in your routine is also a smart move even if it isn't strictly necessary for fat loss. 
New research shows that combining weight training and cardio leads to smaller waist than just weight training alone. Plus, being more active with cardio will allow you to eat more calories and help maintain your weight loss over the long term. Aim for 2-5 to five sessions of low to moderate intensity cardio each week, lasting about 30 minutes each. However, even with the best ab training, your abs won't be visible until you get lean enough, which is where your nutrition comes in. Setting up your six-pack diet is simple. First, calculate calories. Multiply your current body weight in pounds by 10 to 12. This is your daily calorie intake. Second, protein intake. Multiply your goal body weight in pounds by 0.8 to 1. This is how many grams of protein you should eat daily. Fat intake. Ensure you eat at least 50 grams of fat per day. And lastly, the leftover calories can come from carbs, fat, or protein depending on your preference. The type of foods you eat are less important than hitting your daily calorie and macro targets. Remember, the natural bodybuilder I mentioned earlier got lean while eating Pop-Tarts regularly. However, it's still better to prioritize minimally processed, nutritious whole foods over highly processed junk foods most of the time. Here's a summary of the full six-pack diet. First, calories, current weight in pounds times 10 to 12. Protein, goal body weight in pounds times 0.8 to 1. Fat, at least 50 grams per day and remaining calories free to be carbs, fat, or protein. Remember, individual metabolism varies so these numbers may need adjustments. Some people might find these calories too high while others might find them too low. Next, I'll cover common mistakes that almost everyone makes. First is nutrition mistakes. One common mistake in dieting is aiming to lose weight too quickly which can result in muscle loss and weight regain after the diet ends. Aim to lose about 0.5% to 1% of your body weight per week. For example, if you weigh 200 pounds, aim to lose 1 to 2 pounds per week. If dieting for more than 3 months, consider a 2 to 3 week diet break, consuming 16 to 18 times your current body weight in calories. This can help improve long term weight loss results. Relying too much on the scale can be misleading, especially if you're building muscle. Take progress photos monthly and measure your waist to track for fat loss more accurately. Avoid setting goals for body fat that are too low as dipping below 8-10% to for men and 18-20% to for women can lead to low energy and other issues. Next, let's talk about supplements. Some supplements worth taking include number 1. Protein powder. Helps reach your daily protein intake easily. A 30 to 50 gram shake after training is convenient. Number two, creatine monohydride. Take 5% daily for strength and muscle mass benefits. It doesn't need cycling and has no negative side effects. Number three, caffeine. Enhances focus and alertness during training. Use pre-workout supplements, coffee, or caffeine tablets. Avoid daily use to prevent tolerance buildup. Avoid common nutrition pitfalls by aiming for sustainable weight loss and using supplements wisely. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. Aim to lose 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week for lasting results. Don't rely solely on the scale. Track progress with monthly photos and waist measurements. And when it comes to supplements like protein powder, creatine monohydrate, and caffeine, use them strategically to support your fitness goals without overdoing it. For more tips and supporting on achieving your fitness goals, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more helpful content.